Hi, it's Penny here, and if you've watched my videos before, you know in 2023 I was doing a really big push to get to series zero and try to just like catch up on all the series I had in progress. I had a lot in progress at the start of the year. By the end of the year, much less, but still a few. Uh, but this video, we're going to focus on the ones that I completed. So I have 12 series that I completed, and then another 12 where maybe I've completed them, but I'm not confident about whether these series are actually finished or not, or I'm not confident about whether I want to continue or not. So that's a lot of series to get through. Let's let's just get into it. So firstly, we have The Wheel of Time by Robert Jordan and Brandon Sanderson. I think I started this in 2022, but then finished it off in 2023. And again, if you watch my videos, you know I didn't really like it. However, I am still glad that I finished this series because now I can participate in conversations about the series, I can watch the TV show and know what's going on, and I did think the books at the end of the series with Brandon Sanderson did get a little bit better, just the pacing was way too slow for me and the focus of the story was never on the things that I was interested in, and just like the endlessly terrible relationships between men and women and the way that was depicted as just the way relationships are between men and women, but the worst. Um, glad I'm finished that series for sure. Then we have the Crown of Stars series by Kate Elliott. This series I actually don't even know when I started it, a long time ago. Uh, and like The Wheel of Time, this is an epic fantasy, so with it being so massive in scope, it is hard to describe what exactly is going on. Um, but basically we have kingdoms at war, at the same time we kind of have this impending cataclysm with these like, I like to refer to them as dark elves kind of coming back from another dimension. You've got kind of this astronomical mathematical type magic um, and these dark magicians trying to manipulate events. There's just a lot of things going on and with this series I felt like it climaxed at book five but because Kate Elliott's writing style can be quite dense it took me a long time to get through this one and I really was only saved by the audiobooks being released last year and suddenly I could fly through the series a lot quicker. But still this is a series that I've had on my radar for a long time and there definitely are some elements to this series that I really like. I just think overall the structure of the series wasn't such that it really got everything out of it that it could have. And I probably only recommend this series to people who really like those big epic fantasies and don't mind kind of digging through quite a lot of detail and density to get through the story. Then I finished off the Seven Waters series by Juliette Morellier and I will forever be annoyed that there are six books in the Seven Waters series. Surely there should be seven. Uh, but basically this follows initially this young woman whose father marries like this evil sorceress uh, who then curses her where all her brothers are turned into swans and she has to weave this horrible nettle thing which like destroys her fingers in order to get them back and while she's doing that she's not allowed to speak and while she's doing that, all sorts of really horrible traumatic things happen to her, but there's also a bit of a romance. And while it took me a little bit to get into that first book, eventually I ended up like so emotionally engaged, I bawled my eyes out. It was just a really beautiful story, while also worth noting a lot of dark and horrible things do happen, so not for the faint of heart. Then the second book has a very similar storyline and it's that same kind of hate to love kind of romance going on, but it's also similar and it's one where the two love interests are really working together on something and learn to respect each other through that, which is my perfect kind of romance. So I really like the second book as well. The third one, things started going off track. So the second one follows the daughter of the first one, then we start following like a cousin and then we come back and follow three other daughters from the family line that are all like sisters with each other and each one has a romance as well as kind of a magical element but as the stories went on I liked them less and less and especially some of the romances just really didn't fly with me and to be honest I kind of wish I'd stopped after the first three books because those were much more connected and I think you could finish the third one and feel like you were finished. But because I like those ones so much, I was hopeful for the next three and they just didn't really do it for me. But I do think if you like a heavily Celtic inspired fantasy with a lot of romance in it, then this would be a series that would be worth picking up. 
Then I completed The Skyward Series by Brandon Sanderson, so the fourth book in that quartet was released at the end of the year, and I also finished off, I think, the third book and the novellas around that third book. Unfortunately with this series, I just think after the first book, it headed off in quite a different direction, and I think a lot of people really liked that first book, but then didn't enjoy that other direction. Um, it started out as well as a story focused mainly on one character and with their relationships with these other characters, but then in the later books we brought in a lot more different characters and we started following kind of quite broad events. And as well, like a lot of these side characters were what I would class as quite silly uh, space characters. So while Brandon Sanderson was trying to deal with quite a lot of heavier topics, uh, the silliness always undid it for me. And as well there was like some really interesting science fiction elements that were included, but they're such abstract ones that I think anyone would struggle to include them in a story, and the story especially struggled to really get into it. Uh, I guess if you haven't heard of Skyward, quick synopsis, this is a story where humans have been trapped on this planet and anytime they try to leave they get shot down by these aliens. Uh, we're following Spencer whose father ran away during one of these space battles and as a consequence uh, her family is really treated with a lot of disrespect and she really just wants to become a fighter pilot and help fight these aliens. So I really liked Spencer's journey but once we actually got into the bigger human alien conflict and what was going on in space I liked it a lot less. Then I finished the Up and Under series by Sean Ann Maguire, and this is one that I'm so disappointed about. It had such an amazing concept. Uh, basically, Sean Ann Maguire wrote Middle Game, and in Middle Game there's a character who is an alchemist, and she writes this series of children's stories with the idea of getting certain concepts into like the common consciousness so that then she can use those beliefs in her alchemy. And then Sean Ann Maguire decided to actually write those books such an amazing idea. Basically we follow Zib and Avery. Uh, Zib is more eccentric and Avery really likes to follow the rules and they end up finding themselves in the world of the up and under where they have to follow the improbable road to get to the impossible city. And then each book is basically based on a different element and they continue this journey um, trying to get back home and also trying to like do a bit of a quest around the royalty of these different realms. I think I can see where Sean and Maguire was trying to go with these books but the execution was just a bit shaky. I think overall it would have been better as one book with four parts, and I think the parts could have been structured slightly differently because it was just far too drawn out. Also throughout this book series she does a lot of digressions where she gets into different bits of social commentary, and in some of Sean and Maguire's other books I've really loved it when she does this, but I just felt for the Up and Under series the digressions are all over the place, there's no real focus, and they often felt like quite disconnected from what was happening in the story, so it didn't feel like organic digressions. And also, uh, even when she was writing digressions with social commentary that I agreed with, often the way it was phrased would just like make me want to disagree with it. I, I don't know. I just think, unfortunately, amazing concept, but terrible execution. Then I read The Wicked Years by Gregory Maguire, so this is the first book, Wicked, which is like a Wizard of Oz retelling, but telling the story of the Wicked Witch of the West, uh, and her going to school, getting involved with the Wizard of Oz, and different activism things, and eventually going off to live in this castle where Dorothy comes to find her. I really like the way this first book makes it into a full fantasy world, and you can see how Dorothy has come into the world and been set up with false information. And even though there are bits where the writing is a bit hard to get through, and there's also a lot of weird sex stuff that I don't think was necessary, despite all that I really love the first book. Then the second book uh, was almost okay. This follows the son, maybe, of Alphaba, the Wicked Witch of the West, and it tries to get into some important issues, but it just feels like Gregory Maguire was a bit all over the place. You can definitely tell that he never planned any of these future books in the series because they're very unfocused and again very drawn out and slow paced, lots of weird sex stuff, a few good bits but just not quite pulling it off. So the second one is Alphaba's son and then the third one we follow the Cowardly Lion and the fourth one we're following this young girl who eventually has some dealings with 
uh, both Glinda the Good Witch as well as uh, Ozma of Oz and I was excited to get some Ozma of Oz but in the end it wasn't everything I could have hoped for either. So unfortunately The Wicked Years I kind of wish I hadn't decided to come back to this series because I initially read Wicked when I was much younger and I really loved it and so then I wanted to continue the series and I thought that I had continued it previously but it it's not possible actually because the later books were released after the time when I thought I had read them. Anyway, <laughs> I don't mind the first two books. I think the second one is okay, but the third and fourth ones, I kind of wish I'd never read them. Then I finished off the One of Us series by Karen McManus, so this starts with One of Us is Lying, which I think was made into a TV show. I haven't seen it though. Uh, let me know if you think I should. Then there was One of Us is Next, which I also really liked. And finally, the latest one was One of Us is Back. So in One of Us is Lying, we basically have this group of teens in detention. And by the end of detention, one of these teens is dead and the rest of them are suspects. And we kind of follow along with them as their different secrets come out. And there's a lot of like stress on them, but also a lot of suspicion that they did actually cause this guy to die. And it's a bit of a mystery and a bit of a thriller as we learn what really happened. Uh, then in the second book we followed kind of their younger siblings as there is another big drama thriller mystery going on and then finally one of us is back we have a guy who was convicted in the first book and he is now coming back into town and there's a lot of suspicion on him and then some people start going missing so again another mystery thriller thing honestly a YA thriller series is not one I would have expected to like but I did really like this series I just found the characters to be really relatable and like just nice genuine people to follow along with I think so often in adult thrillers all the characters are toxic and unreliable and just not nice to read from and like you don't even care if they die to a large degree whereas that's not how I felt about the characters in the series at all I I worried about them I even cared about all their little personal issues that they had going on even though they're teen things I didn't feel like they were dealt with like an overblown or overly angsty way it all felt very genuine and I really enjoyed it then I read the Howl's Moving Castle trilogy by Diana Wynne Jones so the first book is the book that the Howl's Moving Castle movie is based off and then there is two sequels the second one Castle in the Air follows this carpet merchant who spends a lot of time daydreaming and then someone sells him a magic carpet and perhaps some of his daydreams start to come true and he ends up going on a bit of a quest to try and save this princess that he's fallen in love with. Uh, then the third one we followed this young girl named Charmaine who has never really been taught any life skills and then ends up going to house sit for this wizard and just like learning a lot about magic and about living her life and there's also a bit of a mystery with the royalty and what's going on with them. Uh, I didn't like Castle in the Air so much I thought it was okay but like it wasn't my favorite. I had a few issues with the relationship between the carpet merchant and the princess. But then the third book, The House of Many Ways, I loved it. It was so whimsical. I loved the way the magic worked in it and just like following along with Charmaine as she learns to live her life. It was a beautiful story and I thought it also really captured the feeling of the first story um, where we have this girl named Sophie who's cursed to be old and ends up spending some time with Hal, this mischievous troublemaker wizard. I think Diana Wynne Jones just has a really like whimsical and quite funny writing style but also does a really good job of like putting all the pieces in place and then having them come together in a really satisfying way. So it is a trilogy that I would definitely recommend especially if you like the movie or you've read the first book and haven't continued the series. Then I read His Dark Materials by Philip Pullman. This one I picked up primarily because I know this is one so many people loved when they were children and I thought it's kind of a classic let me pick it up uh, but I shouldn't have to be honest. It was okay. It was okay. No, it was kind of terrible. I don't know. I don't want to insult people who love this when they were younger, but I didn't like it. I do think I could have liked it when I was a kid because it does have a lot of interesting ideas in there, but just the writing style and the main characters were really frustrating to me. And also I feel like so much of the story is written for Philip Pullman to try and get certain ideas across and certain religious philosophy across or like 
anti-religious philosophy across and I didn't really like the way he presented those ideas and I was just frustrated that they got in the way of him telling a good story. So in this one we're following this young girl named Lyra in this world where people have demons that change their form until they become adults and then they kind of settle on a final form uh, and she lives at this university as an orphanage and her uncle is off in the north at the Northern Pole or something investigating this dust and there's a lot of controversy around the dust and the magic involved with it and we slowly learn about that and Lyra is always getting into trouble or trying to help maybe. Uh, unfortunately there's also some weird stories with the adults and the balance I thought was never there and then by the third book we're barely even getting any of Lyra or even the other main character Will introduced from the second book. The third book is just like all over the place who even knows uh, but maybe if you really liked uh, A Wrinkle in Time by Madeleine, Madeleine Le Ingle, especially if you like the rest of the series beyond that first book then maybe you might like it even though uh, the Wrinkle in Time books are very pro-religion so his dark materials are almost like a balance to that. Then I read a series by Lee Murray that honestly I never quite know how to say the name of it. I want to say it's the Tyna McKenna series because the name of the series is this main character who is Maori and so I think his name should be said like a Maori name but maybe it's not maybe it's just Tane McKenna. Who knows because there's no audiobooks. And also this is like a quite a small New Zealand author so if they did get audiobooks done could you even trust the audiobook narrator to be pronouncing things right? I don't know. But anyway this series is a creature horror series which again isn't something I thought that I would like but when I picked up the first book I ended up really loving it. Uh, we follow a bunch of civilians and Department of Conservation and army people and criminals that all end up in the remote area of the bush in New Zealand and then they come across this creature. Uh, that's the first book. Then in the second book again a lot of these same people and also some new ones end up in this other remote area in New Zealand. There's another creature, there's some other Maori mythology going on, um, some more criminals up to no good. I just I think what I really love about the series is how it combines Maori mythology with criminal hijinks and just like high action body horror kind of feels. I really wish that these books would be made into movies. I think like as action movies these could be really amazing. Really amazing. Who's gonna do that for me? Someone. Someone needs to. And if like high action creature horror sounds like something you might like I do recommend this series. Honestly it's not something I thought I would like so maybe it's worth just giving a go anyway. Then I read The Power of the Dark Crystal graphic novel series. I think it was three books or three volumes. So this is a series based on the original Dark Crystal movie which was one of my favorite movies as a kid and I did also really love the Netflix TV show that was done recently and so I was excited to pick up this graphic novel series. It was actually originally written to be a sequel movie but then they never quite managed to pull that off because making a movie like that is a lot of work. Uh, so instead it was told in graphic novel form basically we have the Gelflings who are now uh, quite dependent on the Dark Crystal or on the crystal and then also these fire creatures that live under the ground have come up to ask for help and there's a bit of a conflict and miscommunication that goes on around that. I did think the art in this was quite varied like some of it was really beautiful other bits weren't so great and as well it's one of these graphic novels where I don't feel like the story was always being fully expressed through graphic form as well as it could have been. But that said in the end I did find the story very satisfying. I just wish they'd been able to make it into a movie to be honest. I do think if you like Dark Crystal things then you should read this. And then lastly I finished off the Vita Nostra duology by Marina and Sergei Diachenko. So Vita Nostra is the story about this young girl who meets this man who starts giving her weird tasks uh, and when she completes them she eventually earns her way into this institute of special technologies where the lessons are very strange and everything gets very abstract and bizarre as our main character kind of goes through a metamorphosis. I really loved the first book and I do think the second book was good. Uh, there's a lot of concepts in there that are still very enjoyable. I do think it got a little bit hung up on this love at first sight relationship and it wasn't quite as abstract and strange as the first book which I missed a little bit but I still really loved it and I will definitely be rereading this series again and I actually don't know if that's something I would say about any other series that I completed in 2023. There's a couple that maybe but this one definitely. If you like weird books with really strange abstract ideas in it 
this is the one for you. Okay then let's talk about the six where I finish off the series and maybe the series is done but like there's always a chance that there'll be more in this series. I mean there's a chance for any series that there'll be more but these ones I think might be done but I think maybe they might not be. Anyway, firstly we have the unfamiliar graphic novel series by Hayley Newsome. So this is just about these really adorable witchy girls as they deal with some witchy problems like a curse and a haunted house and a fairy king. I really loved the first volume. The second volume was also pretty good and I did feel like the second volume wrapped things up. But also I know this is a like a web series and I'm not sure if there's more planned or not. I, it's definitely there's definitely scope to be more so who knows who knows but anyway if you want some like cute witchy shenanigans this is the series to check out and it's free online so why wouldn't you at least try it then also another witchy one we have is spell on wheels and i don't remember the authors for this but i'll have the cover here. So Spell on Wheels we're following this group of witches and then something is stolen from them and they go on a bit of a quest to try and get it back and then in the second volume they're basically trying to track down another witch and there's some weird psychic connection stuff going on. I love the concept of this to be honest though I read these nearer the start of the year and I've forgotten them a little bit at this point and I did feel like the execution wasn't quite living up to the full potential of these books. I think they could be really cool. This is another one actually where I would love to see it adapted into a TV show. I think it could be a really cool TV show. Like there were bits that kind of had me thinking of my love of Supernatural. Then we have The Unseen World by Kat Howard. So the first book of this was An Unkindness of Magicians which was released quite a long time ago and then the sequel took a while to come out. The sequel being A Slight of Shadows. I did really like A Slight of Shadows. In the first book there's a magical tournament with different magical houses in this underground magical society are fighting for who's going to be the head of the society and there's also this young girl named Sydney really trying to change the way that the power structures within the world work and then I really liked how in the second book we're looking at how difficult it is to maintain changes in power structures while also kind of still expanding on the way the magic works. Again the second book wasn't quite as good as the first book but I still did enjoy it and I think there is still a lot of scope to explore this world so I'm kind of just in denial that there hasn't been any talk of another book in the series. I'm just in denial and I'm just going to keep believing that maybe we'll get another one. Then we have The Highest House by Mike Carey and someone else did the art, Peter Gross. Uh, so Mike Carey actually turns out to be Emma Carey who wrote The Girl With All The Gifts and Someone Like Me which I have here. Like some books that I really loved and I'm definitely going to pick up more of his stuff at some point but The Highest House is like a graphic novel story. I think when I read it I said it was the most fully fleshed fantasy graphic novel that I'd read like with the most full story that felt like I was reading an actual fantasy novel but now that I've reread Monstrous I'm not sure that statement holds up but still I really enjoyed The Highest House. We're following this young slave boy uh, sold by his mother into slavery and then makes a deal with this magical creature that's connected to this place that he's living in. So this one from everything I've read there's no plans to write anymore however at the end of the story even though it kind of wrapped a lot of things up and it did feel like a satisfying end it said end of book one and there is a lot of scope to still write more. There, there were some open-ended things left unfinished so I feel like there must have been some plan to continue it but it doesn't seem like that's the current plan and yet I'm probably still gonna hold out hope that we will get more. Then I read A Storm of Sisters by Michelle Harrison which was the fourth book in the Pinch of Magic series. Basically we follow these three sisters in this witchy kind of world as they get up to different hijinks. Each of the sisters has like a different magical artifact and there's always a little bit of a mystery going on. I just love the sister dynamics. I always think the stories are really well told with like nice witchy vibes but also like a cool mystery uh, with like pieces laid in place and then revealed at the end in a really satisfying way and they're just heaps of fun. These are middle grade fantasy books I should say. I really love them and I'm glad that I kept reading this series even though maybe I didn't like the second book quite as well but I really like the fourth book. But again I haven't seen anything online about whether this series is going to continue. I've... Let me just double check that actually. Nope still no updates so this is another one where I've done it, I've completed it but 
I'm holding out hope for more because again there's definitely scope for more to be told in this story. And then lastly we have the Kate Daniels Wilmington years. So there were two short little novellas told from the Kate Daniels series. So Kate Daniels is a, I have it here, like a 10 book series following Kate Daniels who's a mercenary in this world where magic has started to come back but it's coming back in waves so sometimes technology works and sometimes magic works. Uh, or vice versa and it's quite unpredictable as well Kate gets very involved in the politics of the shapeshifters and the different magical communities in this world every book pretty much there's a different magical murder mystery type thing going on anyway it's one of my most favorite series and then there are some spin-off books going on but while we wait for those Alona Andrews decided to write a couple of novellas following Kate and her love interest now that they have a kid and they're kind of trying to separate themselves from a lot of the politics of the world but because they're both such magically powerful people uh, that isn't necessarily realistic especially when someone comes to them saying these people are in trouble and they know that they could help. So as far as I know there's no current plans for more Wilmington Years stories however again there's plenty of scope for it and I feel like they'll probably come back to it at some point. So those are all the book series that I finished in the year of 2023. Let me know if you've read any of them because I would love to talk with you about them down in the comments or let me know how you're going with finishing off series uh, and do subscribe if you'd like to see more of my bookish videos. Otherwise thank you so much for watching. I hope that you are doing well and I will see you next time.